Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be covering creating a camera and adding it to a sequence and then exporting that sequence using the movie render queue. All right. So first I need to create a camera. I'm going to come over here to the place actors panel, click on cinematic and choose the cinematic camera actor. I'm going to drag it into my map and I'm going to give it a location so that it frames my shot nicely. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I need to create a sequence for my camera to live inside of. And to do that, I will come up to the cinematics drop down here and click on add level sequence. It's going to prompt me to save the sequence somewhere in my project. So I'll come over to my tutorial folder and give it a name. And hit save. Automatically, it pops up the sequencer here for you. And all you have to do is drag your cinematic camera from your world outliner into the sequencer. And you can see it automatically creates a camera cuts track for you as well as a camera track right underneath it. And the camera cuts track is where you would cut between other camera angles if you had additional cameras in your scene. Make sure you select cinematic camera actor. Otherwise, if you select camera component, you'll be moving around the camera component in the scene and it won't necessarily get the transforms from the cinematic camera actor. So you can see the transform is underneath the actor, not the component. So make sure you have the cinematic camera actor selected. I'm going to set a keyframe for the transforms, going to move it to the end of the shot and translate it back a little bit. Give it a nice subtle motion. All right. I'm going to add another keyframe by clicking on this plus. And if I scrub in the sequencer, you can see it has motion to it. And for me, I prefer not to have an ease on either of these keyframes, which that means is that when the camera starts moving and when it stops moving, it will have a slow transition to rest as opposed to just moving continuously through the entire shot. So I'm just going to select these keyframes right click on them and select linear under key interpolation. And now there won't be any easing. The camera will just move in a linear fashion between the keyframes. All right, next I'm going to save everything just to be safe. And now I'm ready to export this camera and sequence. I'm going to close the sequence and I'm going to come over here to the window drop down. And under cinematics, I'm going to select the movie render queue. It's going to pop up automatically. And all I have to do is drag my movie render sequence into the queue. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this little drop down and just double check that my map is the correct map that I'm using in my shot. Now I have my movie sequence and my map connected. I'm going to select the unsaved config button under settings. And this will allow me to change my export settings. I'm going to first turn off the .jpg sequence export output and add my own by clicking on the plus and selecting EXR sequence here. All right. Next, I'm going to add anti-aliasing. And this is really where we get to tell Unreal Engine to export this movie as a higher quality than you might see in Engine or in Viewport. So first I'm going to select this override anti-aliasing, which again will override Unreal Engine's anti-aliasing settings. And so we can choose a higher, a higher setting and select the spatial sample count, make it three and the temporal sample count five. And these two sample counts are a little bit different. The first one, spatial sample count, this deals with objects that move around in your scene. So things with motion blur and stuff like that. Temporal sample count really deals with static objects, things in your environment that don't move. So there's just kind of two different ways of evaluating your scene. And since I have a very static scene, I'm using five temporal sample counts and I'm a little bit lower of three spatial sample counts. But you're going to have to test what works best for you in your scene. Now I have to choose where I'm outputting my render to. So I'm going to come over here to output and select it. And you can see here that it gives you a file output directory. So I'm going to click on that and make sure that it's the correct folder that I would like to render to. Now for me, I'm going to render this out at 4K. 
even if I'm going to use the image at 1080p, I like to always render at 4K so that when I downscale it, I still keep a lot of that crunchy detail. In the end, I think it just gives you a better image. All right, so here I'm gonna type in 4096 by 2048. If you want to, you can select use custom frame rate. I'm just gonna leave it as is, and that is it. So now I'm ready to export my shot. I'm gonna come down here to render local, and that just means that I would like it to render on my local machine. Now you'll see Unreal Engine pop up this movie pipeline render preview window. This will show you a lower quality version of your render as it's working on your computer and it'll give you some helpful information like the estimated time remaining and a couple of other details. So you can just use this to double check that your render is going through okay. And if I come over here to the folder where I told it to render the images to, you can see the XR images are starting to populate the folder. All right, that's it, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.